Okay, guys, this is going to be a really, really weird one today. It really, truly is. Now, I started um, doing beard product reviews last year, but I seriously started doing a lot more of them in like the last six months. So this video is going to be about things that have surprised me on my bearding journey in that time frame. It's going to be a good one, I guarantee you. So stay tuned after we roll that intro and you go see exactly what I'm talking about. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for staying past that intro. Now, if you first time viewers of the channel, it's going to be a weird one. But I hope you're going to enjoy it and I hope you're going to give me more of your time after this video. Now, if you first timers and you long time viewers who have yet to subscribe, here's chance number one. Look right down here. You're going to see a little channel watermark sitting down there. Click on it, hover over it, should pull up subscribe, knock it out the way early and you're going to feel better about yourself for the rest of the day. Okay, so I basically cut my teeth on YouTube doing knife reviews and book reviews. I gotta tell you honestly, <clears throat> with the knife community, there is not the brotherhood, there's not the camaraderie, there is not the fellowship that it seems to be in the bearding community. I don't see YouTubers trying to sabotage any beard videos that I do. I see lots of comments, lots of love, lots of likes, and lots of shares, which I never ever saw with the knife reviews. There's people that I watch, like Dancy Bearded and you know, Beard Times with Scott. Or I just asked him in one of his video, his live streams, if he'd ever consider doing an interview on someone else's channel. And he was like, hell yeah, man. Yeah, send me a message. Let's set something up. You would never find that ever in a knife, you know, knife community. Now, what killed me is um, recently, within the last two weeks, I had Johnny Slicks on Instagram for like an hour and 20 minutes. And I thought I was monopolizing a lot of his time. What was weird was like, well, we better wrap it up here. And he looked like, really? Are we done? What? But it was just great to have that. And it's great to have other companies that I'm building a relationship with, like Chesapeake Beard Cup. You know, and speaking of them, when I'm watching this video, I should remind myself, I'm going to leave you a little exclusive discount code right down here. All right. It's going to save you 10% off any order from Chesapeake Beard Cup. Yeah, it is an affiliate link. I won't lie. I think it's kind of cool that Gary gave me the opportunity to have that. So if I make anything off of anything, it's coming right back into the channel and help bring stuff in. It's not that I'm trying to take some all expense paid you know, vacation to Puerto Vallarta or some Mexican you know, destination. But, you know, it's just weird, the support. It's like people can go, hey, like with me, with this patch right here, I've gotten so much advice on how to get rid of it. You know, when I had to do the rebooting of the beard, no one was like, oh, you're a pussy, you're an idiot. They were like making baby beard jokes, which... I loved. I just, it made me laugh and it made me get over things a hell of a lot quicker for taking it down. Now, of course, I got my ass reamed than I should have when I had a trimming accident and had to do it again. And that's okay. I expect that from these guys. But it's just weird to think that in certain groups, that would never ever happen. But in this community, that love is everywhere. You know, until you're an absolute tool and then people turn on you, which, hey, I, I get that. It's all good. Hold on a sec. Okay, guys, sorry. I thought the better half was trying to say something, and you know, she was trying to be polite with the whole video. See, that was just her hand back there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's flipping me off walking up the stairs. I love it. I can see the smile on her face, but still. The other thing that surprised me is some of the products out there, and the first one is Beard Butter. I had no idea this even existed. I will freely admit, my first exposure into beard products was a beard oil I got in a battle box. And I thought that was cool. I like how it went the beard and had things go and I started getting out there. I didn't realize you've got like daytime routines, you've got nighttime routines, you've got midday stuff, you've got things for, you know, specific washes, co-washes, that kind of stuff. Beard butter is just freaking awesome. It is absolutely awesome. It doesn't really hang in there and leave oil spots all over your bed, you know, when you're sleeping. You can even put it in during the day, you know, like around noon sometimes I've done that and everything is just fine. So it's really cool that I found that little product, which brings me into another one. Boss Man Brands Beard Jelly. Wow. I had no idea beard jelly was even a thing. Now, speaking of that, Chesapeake Beard Co. has um, Mojo, I think it's called. And that's basically beard jelly as well. I've got one of theirs, and I'll be bringing it to the channel as soon as I get a more in-depth feel of it. Because I brought one by um, Bossman Brands, and if I haven't said it 
yet, look up top. You're going to see a card for every single beard care product I've ever brought to the channel. Yeah, it's the magic scent that was up there. That stuff was just phenomenal. The way it coats, the way it stayed in, that like the fact it was an abomination between oil and, you know, um, balm that you can put in for all day long, and it's like a beard butter for the day. It's just really, really weird. But speaking of weird, let's talk about cleaning the beard. I had no idea you had to use special things like beard soaps or washes or co-washes. I had no idea what any of those were. Now I've recently brought a beard soap to the channel. I have been using lots of washes and co-washes, thinking to myself, wow, this is awesome. You know, just not the fact that, you know, something different. You know, it's something your, your beard hair is different than your head hair. This hair is different than that hair. This is different than that. Yeah, I know, it's getting a little weird in this one, but still. It's just all these things that are out there and how much time and effort go into making these things and the research on them and the development on them. You know, just everything from like bottle artwork. And speaking of that, here, let's use these two as an example. You know, by Chesapeake Beard Co., one of their art, you know, series. Just the intense artwork on that for just a werewolf on there, which is freaking awesome. You know, or the French Crush one. It's beautiful in its simplicity. You know, you, you just can't really beat that. And it's just weird that some of the first oils I got, like most of you guys, I got, you know, Cremo companies. And it's just basically a white label with a little bit of info on there. It's something you would have totally looked by on a shelf. But I guarantee if you're looking for a beard product in a store, you're going to see this instantly. So it's just neat the amount of time and effort goes into artwork that are on the bottles and the labels and everything else and the naming. You know, like, look at Fable Beard Co. They don't have scent. So what makes me sense? They have characters, which is just weird in itself. And now that I've understood what Fable's doing, I really like a lot of their products. I've already got one review shot. I've got one on the way, and there's four more, I think, sitting upstairs waiting for me to get at them and get them reviewed. You know, you, you've got to like that. And it's just weird, and it brings into my last one about, you know, like life-changing products, how when you start really looking into what's going into your beard and on your body, how you're going to start making a lot of changes. I found it funny that, you know, Dan C. Bearded did this thing about Gillette's um, beard oil that they have out there. And recently on Facebook, I saw them promoting that oil. So I responded quick. I was like, hard pass, too many chemicals. And they responded back, well, maybe you'd like this better, and sent me a link to some of their shaving cream. I'm like, wow, right there, Gillette. First, I'm toxic because I've got a beard. First, I'm toxic because I let my kids have a little fun. And now, because I think your beard oil is crap, you want me to shave my beard? Yeah, never buying your stuff ever, ever again. But it's just weird how, like, watching people's stuff and what they're going through and how honest they were, which leads me back to my first point, the brotherhood, how I've been making changes, like getting rid of certain deodorants and going to a natural deodorant. Looking more closely at, oh, heck, where is it? Just like the ingredients, you know, on a bottle. And yeah, I know it's a Fresh Beards one, so it's probably not showing up that well, but paying attention to what's in the bottle as opposed to, hey, that smells good. Okay, I'm fine. Because as much as I loved um, Duke Cannon's like World's Greatest Beard Oil, it really left my beard feeling very, very dry the next day, no matter how much I used. If I used like three little drops, it still made the whole beard feel dry. It smelled great, felt great going in, but the next day, how I felt was just different. And it's just weird feeling out something like that. But I don't know. I just wrote down some quick things, you know, that I've figured out in the last six months of doing this really hardcore style and getting into everything and trying to produce videos to let you guys know what I've been going through. I, I it's just, <laughs> the Brotherhood products and just, I don't know, little things like artwork on a bottle and just changing your lifestyle. How much difference that can make to getting everything coming back healthier and, you know, neater. Because as you all know, I'm in part two <laughs> of the reboot. But still, I want to know your questions, comments, love, hatred, anger, whatever, down below. Did I make a complete idiot of myself on this one? I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'd love to know what you guys think, you know. What have you guys figured out out there in the bearding community? Have you seen support? Have you seen love? Have you seen, you know, all this stuff? Because just recently today, I ran into a troll that's going after Dan C. And I'm like, hmm, interesting that someone paid a freaking troll farm to give him 50 dislikes on a video from the same IP address. Very interesting. But still, 
For you first time viewers of the channel, I told you it was going to be a weird one in the beginning. And yeah, well, pretty much proved that, didn't I? But still, thank you so much for watching this one. I hope I earned more of your time. If I didn't, thank you so much for the time that you gave me. Now, for you first time viewers of the channel, you long time viewers who have yet to subscribe. Well, come on, why not? We're having fun here, right? We're growing, we're creating something cool here. Look in that corner. You're going to see a big channel symbol popping up. It's going to be a channel logo. Go ahead and click on that thing. It's going to bring you right to subscribe. After you've gone ahead and subscribed, please go ahead and beat up its little brother, the bell icon. Why? It's a good question. Because it's going to notify you, my amazing viewer, every single time this channel uploads a brand new video. Now, speaking of videos, two are going to be popping up over here. Those are going to be videos that YouTube is going to select from my catalog that they think are going to be a great viewing experience for you. But there we go, guys. The things that I have learned and surprised me in basically the last six months in the bearding community. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope all of you have an incredible day today.